children left. They did just such a good job. I don't think there's anything left for me. I guess I should have gone first after all. I had a choice. In case you didn't hear it, I just told everyone that I felt she did such a good job that there's nothing left for me to say. Thanks a lot. <laughs> But I do have one small request. I must have been an uh, editor in my last life because I'm a little bit fault on it. And that request is, uh, and it's very interesting, you know, for those who are here this morning, we're reading Chaitanya Chaitanya. And we got to the end of chapter four yesterday. And this morning, I decided with the agreement with the devotees that since we only have a few days left till Lord Chaitanya is coming for Hanima for 10 days, maybe we should skip over the long chapters 5 and 6, which is specifically Gaudi Chananda Prabhu and the Veda Charya Prabhu, and start chapter 7, which is all about what? Punchatafa. And so all the presentations are about much stuff. It's the afternoon of, of, of the morning. So that's quite interesting. But referring to bunch of which the mantra is here on the left side of the altar. I just have one request of first of all all of you that and I'll see if I can play it for you. My little iPod here on me. The, uh, microphone. I'm not sure how it's going to sound. But the request is that since it is one of our two most important mantras in the Hare Krishna Buddha, that we learn the pronunciation very perfectly. So that pronunciation is Sri uh, Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Said Maita, Ganada, Sivas, Gaurava. So the issue I'm bringing up is Gandhara. Generally, uh, you'll find that people, even in our movement, will say, Gadhara, Gadhara. There's really there's four syllables, but only three are said. So the long syllable is the second one. Okay. So I'd like you to repeat uh, just, just the ones who did the presentation. Okay. Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Just then. Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Advaita. Sri Advaita. Isn't that easier? Gadadha. Shivasari. Shivasari. Okay, now everybody. Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Prabhu Nityananda. Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Advaita. Sri Advaita. Kadadha. Kadadha. Shivasari. Shivasari. Gaurabhaktavrinda. Gaurabhaktavrinda. Okay, so let me see if this works. Okay? This is his Shiva Prabhupada chanting. Thank you. 
So you have 10 days to practice, and if, if I'm here for work or name not, I'm not sure or not, then we can test you all, okay? For the variety. Uh, Om Ajahn Tamarindasya. Om Ajahn Tamarindasya. Ranjana Shlakaya. Ranjana Shlakaya. Chakshu Om Nitam Jina. Chakshu Om Nitam Jina. Tasma Si Gameena. Tasma Si Gameena. So when Srila Prabhupada used to find fault in his disciples chastise him, he would use to chastise him and he would encourage him after. So I thought, I started by encouraging him. Done such a great job, I had nothing to say. But then I thought I better make sure I say something to cut down the pride so, so you can do better next time. So, those of you, several of you, were, were at the program last evening. And we just got started with this uh, beautiful teaching of the life and precepts of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Shri Lanthana Thakur. This is actually a very old copy of this particular one. Uh, but it was uh, written and sent around the world by him in 1896, which is the exact same year that Shri Prabhupada was born. And Prabhupada mentioned how significant that, 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 that was, that he was born just when the Christian consciousness of Lanthana Thakur's exuberance and expertise was, was going across the seas, across the oceans. This is 66 pages, 20 pages of Lord Chaitanya's history, Leela, and the last 40, 45 pages. Very expertly, expert presentation of his nine major teachings. So last night we, we discussed, or we listed those nine, and we started to discuss the first one. So I want to pick up where we left off last night in that discussion of the first one. First of all, for all your benefits, especially those of you who weren't there, and also for those of you who were, I'd like to review what those nine were. So could you raise your hands, please, all those who were, who were in the program last night? Don't be scared. That's all. Well, okay, I guess uh, you get to answer all the questions. I think, I think there were a lot more, but uh, they knew what was coming up. So, uh, can you remember what the first point is? Number one, the nine theological principles of uh, Bodhi Vaishnavism as enunciated, first of all, Thiyamalism, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You were there. <laughs> Can you say? It? I think it says uh, Hari is the supreme of Yes. Hari is the supreme absolute truth. One within a second. Second one, anyone? Transcendental devotional fervor. 
and, and, the, and the ecstasy which comes from that exchange of loving relationship with Hari. For the jiva or the soul is this divinamsha or separated part. That's all of us. Five, certain souls are engrossed by prakriti or is illusory energy. Six, certain souls are released from the grasp of prakriti. It's mukti. Seven, all spiritual and material phenomena are beta, beta, prakash. It's one and different. Of Sri Hari, the Almighty. Eight, bhakti is the only means of attaining the final object of spiritual existence. So the process, after my understanding the sambandha, jnana, or the knowledge of the relationships of the Lord and all of His energies, including the material energies and the spiritual energies, the tatashta shaktis, which are the jivas in between. And what is the practice? What is the dharma? What is the duty? So that is bhakti. Service, devotional service. And then what is the result of that? That's number nine. The object is, final object of spiritual existence is prema to Sri Krishna. That is the lone final object. So then he gives a, a short description of each couple pages. I say short because you could write books about each one of these points and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers have done just that. So we had just heard about the Shloka in Bhagavatam, first canto. Badanti tata bhavi asta fam yashyamana vayam brahmati paramanati paramanati shakti. That those seers who are knowers of the absolute truth, they call that non dual substance. The light of yam. They call that substance, that, that entity, that reality, by three names Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. So he is describing, first of all, even before that, the relationship between the Devas and the Supreme Lord. And he talks a bit about Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, so called Hindu Trinity, and lesser Devas like Indra, Chandra, and like that. And how ultimately, though most people who study Hinduism don't understand. The Sanatana Dharma teaching is monotheist. Those study Hinduism, Christians, whatever, Muslims, and most Hindus, probably today, also really don't understand that, that, that there is one supreme Lord. How can there not be, just by definition, look at the dictionary? Spring must be one. But there are many different expansions of avatars and manifestations. Some of them are direct, some of them are indirect. Some of them are vibhu, and some of them are amsha, or vibhanamsha. Some are he himself, and some are empowered expansions for the purpose of like creation, maintenance, and annihilation of the, of the cosmos. Ram, Vishnu, Shiva, and so many other 33 million of power holding controllers. But they're all getting their power from one. 
And there's no other but that. That's what the Vayagyan means. And even the Jeev, we, the dust of Shakti, Krishna tells in Uddhava Gita, Bhagavatam, 11 Tantra, Shushman Biham Jeevo. He says, of, of subtle things, most subtle things, I'm the Jeeva. You and I. So we're also expansion of the Lord. The very tiny, tiny, like atomic part of the light. Spark flying from the fire. Brahman is like the fire. And the Atma, which is also Brahman, is like a little spark. It's not the whole fire. And when that spark flies away from the fire, what happens? It has a tendency to become extinguished, right? But in the association of the fire, it maintains its fiery quality. So the process of of of, no, of any spiritual religion, really, of bhakti, is to put that spark back into connection with the fire. Then sometimes we go a little bit too far. And we conclude that understanding, realizing my, my fire in nature, then we, we think, oh, I must be a whole fire. But there's a difference between Brahman and Paraparam, the term Arjuna uses in chapter 10 of the Gita. Paraparam, 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 he says. That is the one that he Krishna. So then the second uh, categorization of how Hari expands or how to understand the different phases or aspects of them is this verse from Bhagavatam. Brahmati Paramatmati Paramatmati Shabdati. Uh, Brahman is the all-pervading spiritual existence of the Supreme. Sat, that existence. Paramatma is the localized aspect of the Supreme, where he's, he's personal, Paramatma, Supreme Atma, but localized and all-pervading at the same time. Brahman is also all-pervading, but just the spiritual existence aspect. Whereas this is Paramatma is actually a personal aspect of it. <coughs> Only in relationship to the Jikat. From Paramatma come the Purusha avatars. Or Paramatma is one of the Purusha avatars who are responsible for the creation. Mahavishnu, Mugabhadarsha Vishnu, which I'm sure you've all seen pictures in Verbal Pod's books. He's laying on the Karana Ocean, which is in between the Brahman spirit and the material energy. And from his pores of his skin, as he's exhaling in Yoga Nidra, are coming the universes of the Ojikats, Mangas, in seedling forms. And within each one of them, as they expand, he expands as Garbhadeksha Vishnu, and half of the universe, half of that. that Globe, which is covered by eight different layers of material energy, like an onion, so many different layers, and in the middle, a tiny little pinpoint in the middle, is what we experience. And that's why it's so dark without the presence of the sun. Whereas outside of those layers, Everything is like Thomas um, Imaj We 
we have our business has become from the darkness into the light. So everything is light there. Brahman is light. Like they say, God is light. But we are in darkness now, Tomo, because of these coverings, material elements, eight to number. So the very inside is what we call this space. And Garbhadak tradition, the next expansion of Mahavishnu, is laying on half the body of water, which fills in half the universe. You see pictures? It's laying on the Nantashesh, with all the multi-headed divine serpent, with all the heads. And Lakshmi is there at his feet, inside you. And from his navel, something is coming. It's a stem, and on top is a lotus flower. And on top of that lotus flower is born Brahma. Brahma, then, is the secondary creator of the universe. He takes, applying meditation, he becomes a power by Vishnu. And he takes the elements that are there at his disposal. And within his mind, all the karma of all the jivas, all of us, were wrapped up within that lotus stem. And he creates all the different planets, all the different places of existence, and all the different bodies, according to the karma of the jivas. And then, Vishnu spends one more time, as Chirdaksha Vishnu, means he has a place on an ocean where it's said it's made of pure milk, seven, seven different substances, not just water. And this is the same as Paramatma. That same Vishnu expands further into every atom of existence and exists in his fullness within every spiritual atom with the wits of the jiva. So as Krishna says in Gita, Savasachaha Lidi Sanishko Mudasmatir Dhyana for Mucha Vidashta Sava Hamed Vidya Vidantika Vidya Veda Chan speaking as that Paramatma, I am in everyone's heart, from become remembrance and all forgetfulness. And when he speaks in chapter 14, uh, uh, he says that I I am the impregnate the Mahatatra. That is the the Mahavish. But Krishna is saying that I'm doing it all because they're all coming from me, ultimately. So he's ultimately doing it all. But he doesn't have to do it all. As he says in chapter 4 of the Gita. He says, Namam Kamani Lanbanti. There's nothing I have to do. I make karma palace for him. No do I get the results of my, of my work. And anyone who understands that about me, he is also free from karma. So he doesn't have to do anything, and yet he does everything. But he does it through his expansions and energies. While what does he do? He's simply dancing with Radha. Now just say, if you were the, what to speak of God, if you had all the wealth in the world, 